Hello, everyone, and thank you for taking time today to join the TIBCO virtual meetup, How to Collect, Process, and Visualize the Internet of Things Data the Right Way. I am pleased to introduce the speaker, Miguel Torres, Principal Architect, and Marcelo Gallardo, Senior Solutions Architect, both from the Office of the CTO, TIBCO Software. Before I hand the mic over to Miguel and Marcelo, I have a few housekeeping items to cover about this presentation. We are recording today's webinar and it will be available on YouTube later this week. After the presentation and demo portion of today's webinar, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. Miguel and Marcelo, take it away. Thank you, Erin. Um, so this is Miguel. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about uh, Project AIR. Uh, which is basically an IoT solution, Internet of Things solution, uh, that we put together, Tipco Labs, um, that uh, does a few things. Um, first of all, um, it, it allows you to access and manage um, your IoT devices. Every time you have an IoT so, uh, solution or some sort of like IoT project, you're gonna be need to uh, register, um, um, edit, um, ping those devices, um, add some um, more devices, remove them, et cetera, et cetera. So Project Air at its core, it will allow you to do all that. Um, and that includes all your gateways, your edge devices, sensors, et cetera. So that's just the core of it. Um, but it also allows you as well as just managing those devices to process the derived data that comes from it. Each of those devices, um, for example, those sensors are gonna be producing some data, right? That's the whole point of having Internet of Things and devices connected to your platform. Um, and with Project Air, you're gonna be able to process that data. You're gonna be able to decide how you uh, connect to it, how do you uh, pass that information all the way up to your data store, and um, how, how to do it and where to put it, basically. So Project Air allows you to do all that as well. Um, why did we create this project? Basically, what we believe is the data processing is done best when all the tools are well integrated and loosely coupled um, in a single place and they are simple to use. That's our um, main objective, right? To make IoT simple to use and to visualize. Um, so basically that's what Project Gear is. Um, and how are we doing this? It's just a very big stack of uh, different technologies um, that we'll see a little bit later. Um, we have a combination of TIPCO technologies like uh, cloud platform, our database, graph database, uh, some integration and analytics tools, um, as well as some open source um, that integrates and closes those gaps um, that allows you to bring all the data all the way from the edge, uh, all the way up to the cloud or your on-premise um, service. So basically, just to have a high level overview of the architecture, we are leveraging, as we say, at the edge, which is the bottom picture, um, a set of microservices and a platform called HX. That's an open source platform that allows you to register new devices um, and create new adapters for devices that are not supported. And once you are connected to HX um, services, then you are integrated basically, and you can start sending data all the way up to the stack. So we have integrated HX all the way up to our services, including applications like PCI, uh, PCE for events, cloud starters, et cetera. And then you can also run analytics on top. So all the sensor data that you're receiving, you will be able to use our Spotfire tool to actually uh, have some ML data science and, and analytics on top. Um, allowing for better visualization. You can have your own Spotfire dashboards. Uh, you can also expose some of that data using API management, and you can decide which sort of like a data store um, um, service to use. So that's kind of like a high level overview, but the best way to understand it is to um, have a look at it. And um, uh, Marcelo Gallardo is gonna, is gonna help us with that. Um, so, Marcelo, all over to you. Thank you. Hey, hello, everybody. Sorry, I was on mute there. Can, you, can everybody see the screen? Yes. Good morning. So uh, as uh, Miguel mentioned, today I am going to demonstrate 
how Project A works. Um, just a, an overview, there's a, the, the tool pretty much facilitates the interoperability between devices that are at the edge and applications that can be running either at the edge or at the cloud, okay? So this is the, uh, the UI for Project Air. And here we, ha we are going to show you the, the, how we have organized the access to the device. At the top level, we organize by gateways. A gateway is like a grouping, uh, a location where the devices are located. And here we are just showing you the um, top level information, how to access the gateway and actually a picture of the, where the gateway is uh, located. Also, we have um, a, visual, um, a tab that will show you the, the devices available at that specific gateway. So in this case, if I go to gateway one, I can see a, a, a few devices that are already connected and, and are on part of the framework. So in this demo, what I want to do is I want to actually um, deploy a new device and see how easy it will be to start receiving data and actually be integrated with all of the applications that we have running at the cloud and also on the edge, okay? So to do that, I'll, I'll go to a um, tab here that where we have the device provisioning. And here I am going to select, the first thing is I am going to select a gateway where I want to deploy this new device. So I, I, I am going to select a gateway one. Then I need to select a device profile that these devices represent. So, so here I have predefined a few devices. And in this case, I am going to be deploying a particle device. I don't know if you guys are familiar uh, with particles. This, uh, they provide some uh, uh, smart, uh, smart devices that uh, you can connect sensors to it. Uh, and then you have to connect a um, device service that is uh, uh, running on the edge that will be connecting and communicating with that uh, device. So in this case, I am going to select this particle MQTT service that is going to be communicating with the device. And then you just have to give a name to the device. In this case, I am going to call it the uh, mesh argon thing. And then you can give a description, you can give it a demo uh, and put some labels if you want to identify the device with the specific labels, location and things like that. And some this other information is a protocol information that if you want to talk to the device from here, from this uh, interface. Um, in this case, uh, let, let's call it uh, the protocol type, let's call MQTT, uh, the protocol host, let's just do it on, it's connected on my machine, local host, and the protocol port is going to be 183, and the protocol topic is going to be called, let's call it connect, oh, I'm sorry, command, topic, and we'll do underscore mesh argon 10. Okay, and uh, the client ID, let's call it the particle command publisher. Uh, the, let's put it the username, and uh, let's put a password to it. So with this uh, information, we can add the device to the framework and as soon as we do that, uh, the, it's telling me that the, the device was added successfully. So now I should be able to see that the um, device, if I go back to my device tab and select the gateway, I should be able to see that device here. You guys can see here is um, the device that I just added. But right now that device is actually transmitting data uh, and you guys can see it right away that the data is coming from the uh, from the device. Actually, I can add more more subscribers to that device uh, and receive data. For, so, so you do that from here going to the gateway and going to the subscription tab. In this tab, you will be able to select where you want the data to be sent. So right now I have a default subscriber, but I can subscribe to other applications. Like for example, if I have a typical business events application that is interested in that data, I can select here and subscribe to that data so that application will start receiving the data. 
I have here another flow application that also is interested in that data and the way to do it, you just provide information to that application and then just add the subscription and that application will start receiving the data. Um, once that the data is, a, is a received by your applications, you can do different things with it. But one thing is like, again, you can just see the data in real time. Like for example, I go to the device, you guys were able to see the latest values that are being received. And here you can also see all the different instruments that that device has connected to it. So in this case, for example, it has um, a light sensor. And when you click the light sensor, you will see the metadata for that um, instrument. So it will tell you like, what is the data type of that uh, sensor that is sending? What is the minimum value? What is the maximum value? And here you can see a history of the data that is being that has uh, that device has sent and here at the bottom you can actually see the data being sent in real time from the device so right now you guys won't be able to see it but i am going to cover actually the sensor uh, just to show that the value will change in real time in a few seconds i think it's every 15 seconds that the device is sending the updates and you guys can see the value should change if i uncover again the sensor then the device will start sending a new value and you will start sending a uh, high value. There, there we can see. So we can see that this is all in real time. Um, other thing that we have integrated with it, and I want to show you, is the, our protocol flow of rules, and that we have a process actually running on, on the edge close to the device. So from here, we can go to the edge rules part and select the gateway we want to interact. And here I have created a, a, a rule that is using that specific uh, um, uh, device. So I can create a new rule, but what I want to show you is that once that the device is part of that network, you can select, like here, when you're creating the rule, you are able to select what device you want to create the rule with. In this case, I selected this new device. I just added the mesh argon 10. And here also, it will show me all the sensors that are attached to that device. So in this case, uh, you guys can see it's a, uh, I selected the light sensor, and I want to create conditions that I want to trigger the action in this rule. So for example, I am saying, if the new value on this device is less than 1,000, then I want to execute a notification and send a notification saying that the room is too dark or something like that. Um, or you can actually uh, select a value and, and check against uh, the previous value that the device sent because or the uh, rule engine is, uh, maintains the state, so we can check against previous values too. Or you can compare the old, old value against the new value. So as you guys can see, it's pretty easy to uh, create the rules, and then once that you are happy with the rule, you can just deploy the rule. Um, the, whenever the condition is um, met, the a notification will be sent. Uh, here I will quickly jump into notifications. And here we can see that there are some notifications from other devices. And right now I am going to cover my light sensor so that it will generate, so that the value will go under 1,000. And when I refresh, I should be able to see that the notification here, here we have, the room is too dark. So the, the rule was triggered and the action was executed and I received the notification. Again, right now it's just sending a notification to here, but then some other actions that we are planning to do is like creating a use case for or a case management tool, which is also integrated in, in, the, in the GUI. So for example, here if I go to my case management, yeah, one minute. Tab, Marcelo. I can see all the different case that have been created by other devices that we, we created rules that uh, to instantiate uh, a case management um, case in the live app application. Um, I think I am running out of time, so uh, that's all for today. And if you guys have questions, we'll, ha we'll be happy to answer it. Thank you, Miguel and Marcelo. Uh, we do have a question. What are the TIPCO cloud advantages versus AWS IoT stack? Um, I can, you can you, go, you go yeah, okay. okay, so I there are, go, go ahead. There are two, two main 
uh, there are more, but there are two main advantages. The first one is, is we are focusing on open source strategies. So the whole Edge X that will be open source, and most of our ta stack will also be open source. That's the first one. The second one is it will allow you to integrate with our platform. So as Marcelo was showing right now, you can actually integrate with our case management, Spotfire, and, and we are integrating more every day. Uh, so those are the two main big differences between us and advantages versus AWS. Um, yeah, and I will add a, a few more. Um, I think the main advantage is that we are actually cloud agnostic. We can actually integrate with AWS cloud and also with Azure cloud. So we, we are right. uh, 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 able to connect to any of those uh, technologies too. Yeah, and not only that, but we will allow to deploy in multi-cloud as well. Yes, that's a good point, Marcelo. So those, yep. those are only a few of those, but, but there are more um, that we're leaving um, behind. Perfect. Um, okay, so there are no more questions. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for attending. And please remember to visit tipco.com and the TIPCO Labs GitHub repo for additional information. And remember to check back on YouTube later in the week for this video. Thank you very much. Thank you.